I just watched the Netflix reboot revival series of The Babysitter's Club, and I have a few things to say about it. Hello, everyone! I am random 42 the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy. This video is intended for grown-up fans who grew up with these books or anybody on my channel who might be curious. This is not for young people. This is not for young viewers or any of that. My channel isn't for that either. If you guys do like my content, like, subscribe, share. Every sub gets a jiggle and I love you guys so much. Now, I gotta talk about The Babysitter's Club. I just watched it on Netflix yesterday and I marathoned it, which is something I never, ever, ever, ever do. I watched the first episode and I immediately had to watch more. There's some issues I have with this. There's a few issues and there's a lot of good things to say too. So this is going to be one of those reviews where I think they found a good way to do a lot of this and mm, I took notes. I took some notes. So first off, what is The Babysitter's Club? It was a book series written by Anna Martin from the 1980s, you know, from people my age to read when we were that age group. And it is about four plus teenage girls. They're not even teenagers yet. They're probably around 12, 13 years old at this point, starting a club business to babysit other people. And of course we have all of this. We have a very, hmm, how do I put this? We have a very diverse group in the book series initially. It is more diverse now. And I know what you're thinking, but Mecca, they swapped all of these characters. All right. All right. All right. All right, I think I know why they did this, and mm, I got some mixed feelings about this one. So, first off, our main cast here. So, we have the first episode kind of sets up the first main characters, and then as the series progresses, and as the book series progressed, we had more characters sprinkled in. We have uh, the far, far side, or should we start next to me? Next to me! You know what? Why, why not? We'll start off with the elephant in the room. Marianne. Now, they did actually change out Marianne. They did change Marianne in a way that I don't think affects this character. Now, if you told me that this actress did the best read for this character, I believe it because she really embodies this character. This character is supposed to be very reserved. She's trying to struggle to be the daughter of a single dad. She's trying to come out of her shell a little bit more. She's very quiet. She's very reserved. She's very much, I guess a peacekeeper would be a best way to put it when she can. She doesn't have a lot of confidence yet, but here we go. Well, this is just the first episode. This girl in the hat, Christy, she's kind of the main girl. She's supposed to be the tomboy. She's supposed to be the male bashy. She's a little over, and I wrote it down even in my notes. She's a little over the top with the male bashing stuff. She's a little feminist. She's she kind of was anyway, though. This is the character in the Mar that the Mary Sue would write articles about asking if she's of the alphabet persuasion, if she's an L, if she's going to be when she grows up anyway. And, and you know what? Worry about that when she grows up. Who cares? Focus on what the show is about now, right? And granted, she might be that sort of self-insert representation character, but for me, she was a tomboy who was bossy and in charge and in control and always tried to take charge of every situation. And that's what was so appealing about these girls. You had all these diverse characters anyway that you could always identify with where you have a group of female characters all having very different distinct personalities and identities that you can latch on to and identify with in some form or another. Next character, we're talking about Claudia Kishi. She is you know, of, of Japanese descent. A lot of really, really heavy, deep sort of topics in these at an age appropriate level, unlike my channel, my channel is not really appropriate for anyone. Stacy on the far right, she was the New York girl. Her issue was she had diabetes, was pretty much publicly shamed for it. They updated a little bit of that by making it on social media. And th mm, this, this show does so well of taking a book series that was in the 1980s and updating it just enough. It updates it just enough to keep it identifiable, but I really, really think this is for people who read the books. I really think this is only for people who read the books. If you're coming into this, you're not going to really understand a lot of what's so enjoyable about this if you haven't read the books. And 
I'm going to get to that when I talk about what I really, really had a problem with. It is when they deviate from the books. That is where my biggest, biggest, biggest issues are with this TV series. Now, like I said, we're going to have some, here we go, more diversity, more characters coming in. And, you know, let's put this full screen. One of the things I did like, now, they set up this agency, they're all, it's a club, where they have clients call in on a landline. I love the little nice touch of the Con Air see-through phone that lights up. I really, really like that. I thought that was really cute. Every, pr pretty much every note I have is, okay, Christy's over the top male bashy, but people kind of treat her like, oh, this again, and they eye roll her, and they sort of let her tone it down a little bit, or let her know to tone it down. I do like that about this. The other thing that I really, really love is every time they stick to the books. And here we go. They pretty much for the first eight episodes, they were sticking to these books almost verbatim, except for where they had to update it with cell phones, except for where they had to update it a few places here and there. And you guys know where I'm going with this if you've watched this show. By the time we get to episode four, by the time we get into episode four here, we have this girl in the middle. Now, she's supposed to be, her character is Dawn. Now, her character, Dawn Schaefer, I believe is her last name, is supposed to be a California girl, probably Northern California, a bit of a hippie, a bit of one of those sort of granola, new age, that sort of character type. And I believe she was more of a blonde surfer girl in the original book series. Forgive, forgive me if I'm wrong. It's been a long time since I've read them, but here, here's Dawn in the original book series. Now, let me pull that up a little bit bigger. She's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed California girl. They did change her to being a very much, well, they made her more ethnic. They gave her a background. I, I, hate, I hate calling it out for it because I like the character up until the very last episode. They made her very much... I think they made her a little bit more richer of a backstory than just a, oh yeah, her mom grew up in Connecticut, lived in California, got divorced because, oh, and here's another thing, whether I, I don't remember if this is in the book or not. Her mom got divorced from her dad because her, her dad is gay and he didn't know right away. So that's some more of the representation and stuff coming in and modernizing it a little bit, which... In this series, this is kind of where you can do that sort of thing. This is where you can go in and take a property that it was always meant to have all of this representation of all these different sort of backgrounds and all of these different characters. And this is where you do it. And like, you know, oh, no, we're just going to replace Luke Skywalker or we're just going to, you know, race swap Superman or something like that. This is where you can do that sort of thing. And I know a lot of people are probably upset with the two characters that they did race swap. I mean, that's the only way to put it. Oh, this is where I got the mixed review. All right. I'm going to tell you this. I loved pretty much every moment of this series up until episodes nine and 10. The first eight episodes follow the books so closely, except for a couple of little discrepancies here and there. I was still sucked in. I was still along for the ride. I still really loved going on this nostalgia journey and seeing what updates that were made, right? And this is me, and I don't like anything. So if I enjoyed this for the heartwarming stories, this gave me exactly the same warm fuzzies when I was a kid reading these. This gave me the exact same uplifting messages. This is exactly what the shows like Full House and TGIF shows didn't do when they did the sort of uplifting stuff. This does it in a way that kind of helps me, I guess, have some hope for humanity was the best way to put it. Until we get to episodes nine and 10. All right, where, where do I start? So up until episode eight, we're going and following exactly the book series, exactly, pretty much with a few cell phone updates, with a few little things here and there. I even think one of the one of the kids that while while Marianne and Stacy are away on vacation, one like babysitting vacation, they even bring in a token gay kid for no other reason than diversity. At least in my opinion. There's a couple of little eye roll things here and there that don't really take away from the overall story until we get to those last episodes. And what do I mean? They just couldn't wait until the diverse characters actually come in naturally. They had to skip ahead to a book 
that wasn't even released until 1989. Now, these books were released in 1987. So they had to wait until about 30 or 40 books came out to get this story that they used from a super special. So this is like a summer edition where it had pretty much all the girls. It was a much bigger edition. That's one of the things that they would do with these is they would like have your normal series of books and then you would have the super specials. So what they did was they took one of the super specials from years and years later, years after the fact, to bring in some characters that would have just been there in episode or in book number 14. All right, where was I? Oh, talking about the camp episode. So yes, up until they, they go through books one through eight, and instead of going into the spooky Halloween episode, which, you know, they should have done by talking about the ghost in Dawn's house here, and yeah, pretty much we've done all of these in the show, <laughs> except when we got to number nine. Oh, and number 14 is when they introduce... Jesse Ramsey here. Episodes were reporting cover topics from the books, including isms and divorce. Well, guess what? They never covered isms or any of that. They did cover divorce, but they never covered prejudice against somebody's skin color. They never covered that so far in the series. What they did do is come in and just bring in some extra ethnic diverse characters instead of having characters that were true to the book series, which were representative of the 1980s when they were written. Now, here's where we get into where it really drops the ball. Not only did they skip ahead a few years, but they also seem to have lost some of the spirit of the show for a while by making the girls a little over the top. They made Christy a little over the top in this last episode here. They made Dawn almost insufferable and... Yeah, they went a little too, too over the top. They made, they made Christy a little too bossy when they got to camp. They made Dawn go full protest, despite the fact that it interrupts Marianne's play. That was my big problem with it is that it just seemed such a complete, all right, we're going to stop where we're going and go in this other direction now. Now we're going to send them off to camp. Well, if you're going in the order of the books anyway, why didn't they go on the cruise? I can't even forgive the Wokemon stuff in this. And I know you guys are probably going to be like, but Mecca, but Mecca, they change characters and you don't like that usually. But in this case, this is where you do it though. This is where you want to showcase that because it was always about that. It was always about representing different girls to identify with different girls, right? If you were a girl reading this book series, you would have a favorite character or two and you would be so much more keen to grab their book off the shelf other than some, than some of the other girls, right? If you were a Christie, you would pull her book off the shelf quicker than the others. If you were a Claudia, you would pull her, her book off the shelf. I understand why they did it. It kind of doesn't sit well with me, but what else are you going to do? Just keep it in the 1980s and make it exactly verbatim? I think that you kind of have the best of both worlds. You have this aimed at a much younger audience who's going to see the world more diverse than it was in the 1980s. So I can understand that. There's a lot more people who have mixed families. There's a lot more people who marry different people than how they look. That is representative of... I think what the books were trying to do in the first place, so I can forgive it for that. They were teaching people about sign language and deaf people. So they these books were always super, super representative. They were always super diverse anyway back in the day. They were always trying to showcase different walks of life, different abilities, disabilities. There's episodes where Stacy deals with her diabetes, just like it happened in the book. There's episodes where Claudia deals with the pressures of her Asian family and connecting with her grandmother even after a stroke. That's what I need to learn about this and I need to look at the world through a whole completely new perspective. And this is what I do love about this series. So this is where you do it. I have rambled long enough about this. I gotta score it. Um, You know what? I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. And that is only because I did not like what they did with the last two episodes. I didn't like how Dawn went way over the top SJW. I didn't like how Christy's a little over the top male bashy, even though at least Christy, people treat her like, oh, come on, for crying out loud. And they just roll their eyes at her. They're like, oh, here we go again. They do have a few little, little things that if you can get past and remember the books fondly like I do, I think you'll really, really enjoy this. 
Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for sticking with me while I just brain dump on this TV series. I did really, really enjoy it. I recommend it if you were a fan of the books. I think you might still get a kick out of it. It was still really well written and well acted and directed and it felt like the Babysitter's Club. I am MeccaRanda42 and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye. It's still a good series. <laughs>